I'm, yeah, it's Myog Tuesday? So yeah, stick around. Welcome back everybody for part two of Kydex. So, we are gonna go with the next logical step we have our blade, in this case the Joker Lynx that we're going to be making a Kydex sheath for. And what we want to do is we want to prep this blade and get it ready. Now we also have our homemade Kydex taco style press. Some people will say, well I need a taco style it didn't hinge on both sides. Well you know what, it's close enough to a taco if that's your criteria. Then we got an electric griddle here that we can heat up our kydex with we have our painters tape and I have some kydex sheet kydex comes in different thicknesses and it's done by at least all the kydex I've seen sold around the US it's done in the English system this kydex right here that I'm touching is 0.080 and this kydex is 0 .060 so this is thinner this is thicker and kydex comes in a lot of different colors this is just black I have some OD green here um, you can get kydex just about in any color you want any color of the rainbow including crazy neon colors with graphics and you know it's, it's all about what you want it's your sheath okay but I'm going to use black and I'm going to use the 0 .060 and I'm going to do a when you're talking knife sheaths and kydex there's really two styles there is the taco style where you have one sheet like this and it folds around the blade and typically those are really close to the spine and they come just past the blade here and this is where your rivets would be then there is the pancake style where you have two separate pieces of kydex you put the blade in the middle and you form and you'll have a larger border around both sides with your eyelets or rivets or however you want to put it together I'm going to do a pancake style two piece and I'm going to use the 0 .060 just so we all understand we're on the same page so let me get a few things moved out of the way here and I'll bring you back and we'll do the blade prep so to do the blade prep we're going to need a few things you need your blade you need your painters tape I got this wide painters tape you're gonna need another sharp blade here I have a uh, utility knife to cut with and if you want to do a drain hole which I recommend in a kydex sheath you're gonna need a bamboo skewer okay all right so the first step in blade prep is we want to take our blue painters tape and we're going to cover the blade and you're going to have to do this for each side okay we want to come right up see how I'm making that where it covers the entire thing okay all right so what I'm going to do now you can do two or three layers on each side and what this does is this gives you a little bit of um, extra width so that when you mold the kydex around here you can get your blade in and out you're not fighting okay plus if you accidentally put the blade back in the sheath and you might have something on your knife blade it's not going to be rubbing really hard and get your knife blade stuck so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put huh you can do two or three layers and I think for this blade we're gonna do three so let's get three layers on here and then I'll show you the next step
Okay. One more layer. Okay. Now the next step of this, you're going to take your utility blade and we're going to trim the excess off and you can go ahead and flip this over. Sometimes I find it a little easier to do it this way. Now I'm not a Kydex expert. I've made a few sheaths. I've had a good time doing it. I like the material. I know how to use it. But by no means am I an expert. Okay, see how I'm taking that off? See that? And it's right up to the spine. I'll go come in here and I'll take that off. And this is my garbage. Come in here one more time. See, I'm getting that last little bit right up to the jimping. Okay. Then I want to get rid of this big floppy mess. So I got to cut right up here. Very gentle because I don't want to mess anything up. I don't want to scratch anything. Okay. Okay. I still got a piece of tape there that's holding on. Let me get that right there. Okay. All right. So I got that. Now I need to remove this right here. And this is a little tricky. I always feel like I'm going to mess something up when I'm doing this. I don't want to directly touch that cutting edge, but I want to be as close as possible. Because after this, I'll end up sharpening the blade again anyway, thinking that I maybe dulled it. <laughs> last little bit it's always fun okay got that now I gotta get this last piece right there okay now I'm gonna go back I'm gonna uh, I got pieces sticking to me I'm gonna go back and you can see this little bit of blue sticking up here and this this and that I'm going to go back and try to trim that as best as I can. All right. There we go. I got a little bit right there in the tip. The tip's always a hard spot for me to get. Um, just like that okay so there's one side done now we want to repeat this process to the other side I got a little piece there okay we want to do this again on this side so I'm gonna go ahead and pause the camera do that real quick because I don't think you need to see it twice and then I'll bring you back for the next step Okay, so we've got both sides of the blade covered in three layers. We're ready for the next step. Now the next step is we're going to take this bamboo skewer and I'm going to measure, I usually do about two inches. That's about two inches where my thumbnail is. And I take my sharp knife, I just roll that bad boy cutting into it okay. so I've made a little line and I break that off 
Okay, now I'm going to clean that break up a little bit. Okay, so we have a piece of bamboo skewer that's two inches long. Now I'm going to try to split it dead center. I'm eyeballing it here. Mm, didn't quite get it where I want it. Mm, I think that'll do. Okay, so we put a split in it. Now we're going to put it on the end of this blade. If I can do it without rolling up the tape. That's the key part. Sometimes you got to use this blade here as a wedge to hold that open. There we go. Let's see if I can get this on there. Trying to do it around this camera is fun. Okay. So I have that on there. And I want that to cover, whoops, dang it. All right, let's try that again. I want this to go over the tip as much as possible. Okay, so I have it on there and I want it to cover the tip. All right. I think that'll do. So that is what we're looking for. Kind of straighten that up. Now I'm going to go get my super glue and I'm going to put just a tiny little dab of super glue here and here just to kind of hold it in place so that when I go to move it around it doesn't get out of alignment. So I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. I got some fresh super glue here. So we're just going to try to do just a tiny little dab. I don't want to do a lot. And I usually, ah, there we go. Okay, just got a tiny little dab on there. I'm going to do that on the other side. There we go. So, and that's just going to keep that skewer from moving on me. I want it right where I want it. Eh. Now I can try to straighten that up because it's canted to one side a little bit. I'm holding it one way and I'm blowing on it here off camera just to try to straighten it because when I look down the blade from the back I, I want it kind of as straight as I can get it and I think I got it as good as I'm gonna get it now I'm just gonna let this dry and then we'll be on to the next step so I'll be right back <clears throat> okay now that the glue has had time to set up and we're all good we're gonna proceed to the next step which is figuring out how big our kydex pieces need to be to make our sheath now in the beginning of this, I, I talked about there's two different kinds of uh, Kydex sheath. There's a taco style, which would go, the blade would go down through here to the middle. So it's basically a one big piece that folds around the blade from the spine out. Then there's the pancake, which is what I'm doing, which is two pieces and the blades in the middle. Now, the reason I'm doing a pancake rather than a taco is because when I put the eyelets in around it you'll have eyelets on either side of this blade it gives me more mounting options now I have seen where people have made a taco style uh, sheath and they've just added you know the, they put the fold like out here so they could put that I don't want to do that so we're gonna do what I'm gonna do so <clears throat> You want to figure out how much material you need and you need from the tip of the blade out you need one inch minimum one inch this way and one inch this way okay that gives you enough material uh, that when you go to cut after we formed it you have plenty of material to work with you don't want to make it too small okay and I want I want the sheath to come up to about here almost the first rivet 
so yeah so we can do six inches that way and three inches this way so I need two pieces six inches by three inches so we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next step I'm gonna pause this get everything ready and I'll bring you right back for that okay so for this step we need our utility knife with a nice sharp blade in it we need our kydex a steel ruler a steel ruler or a metal ruler is the best way to go on this step okay so we need we know we need two pieces six by three and I measured the sheet they sell these sheets 12 inches by 12 but really only this direction here is 12 and this direction here is an eighth of an inch short of being 12 so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure three inches out here I'm gonna cut this off then we cut that piece that we cut off in half and we'll have our two pieces for the sheath now before we do that kydex or most materials now I keep saying kydex kydex is a trade name for any of this thermal form plastic sheet and there's so many manufacturers out there now and they can't use the name kydex it's like uh, it's like Kleenex here in the States we have this nasal tissue that you blow your nose with and it's called Kleenex well Kleenex was the first in the market and now everybody calls nasal tissue Kleenex same thing any of these thermal form plastics they usually have a grain side this side has a grain to it and a smooth side we want to use the smooth side that's the side our blades gonna be on but our smooth side also gives us the ability to lay out our lines for cutting now I just want to make sure that I didn't turn this around that this is still yep that's 12 inches okay so let me grab a sharpie that's the only other thing we need for this is a good sharpie and for black kydex like this I would recommend one of these silver sharpies they work really well so what we're going to do is we're going to measure three inches oh yeah that's a smooth side So right there and then I'm going to measure three inches here yep. and then I'm going to double check this measurement and I'm going to double check that measurement because you measure twice and cut once okay now I'm going to use that measurement those measurements as a guide for when I cut this and I'm sorry you're getting a little bit of glare I can see there in the camera nope let me bring the intensity down there we go you still got a little bit of a glare but it ain't as bad okay so I'm lined up on my two measurements I gotta turn this a little bit because I'm here to the side of the camera and You'll just take this knife and cut, cut, and cut. Now the reason we got this cutting board is it catches the blade on either side. So I cut pretty deeply into that three times and then flex it. Look at that now we're going to measure and cut this directly in half so let's see here okay that's dead center right there right 
right there. Okay, there's my new points for my next cut. that's all we're doing we're just making a deep score line into the plastic and then we can there we go there's our two pieces now when you look at this you see we got plenty of material plenty of material that's what we want all right now on to the next step so I got to pause this get everything set up and I'll bring you right back Okay, we're back now Here's where things get interesting Heating your kydex you can use a toaster oven you can use a t-shirt press if you got one You can use whatever you want. I Have got an electric griddle here and I got the they have they make these usually in two sizes They make a small size and they make a big size. I got this big size because I was eventually, I'm looking at probably doing a Kydex sheath for one of my machetes, but I digress. So I got the bigger one, and I've already kind of got it tuned in. There's a power control dial here, and I kind of got it tuned in to the temperature it needs to be. We got our Kydex pieces here, and what we're going to do, we're just going to put them on here, and we're going to let them heat. And you can already see they kind of curl up a little bit. Now when they come to temperature, they're going to flatten out. You're also going to need some gloves. I got these uh, Mechanics knockoff gloves. Got them at Harbor Freight. They give me just enough thermal protection to uh, not burn myself. I'm going to get the Kydex press over here ready, which involves opening it up getting my clamps ready we got our knife right here and you can get yourself one of those contactless uh, thermometers if you want and you can be sitting here driving yourself crazy checking this kydex to see if it's the temperature see that how it's curling up you can do all that me I don't bother with that I've done a few sheaths I know how this stuff acts once it starts flattening out which it's starting this piece right here is starting to do once it gets all flattened out and it gets a certain floppiness see how that is now that's almost ready really close so what we do when this comes to temperatures we'll grab one piece I'm gonna pan over here I'm gonna get you on the press when I think we're ready, almost. Yeah, it's getting there. I like using this because it gets the temperature pretty quick. But what we do is we grab one piece, we're going to put it in the press, we're going to put the knife on top of that piece, grab the other piece, put it on top like we're making a sandwich, slam the press closed, and put the clamps on it really hard, really fast. You got to work really fast when you do this because as soon as you take this kydex off from here it starts cooling that one's all I'd say that one's about ready see how elastic it gets very floppy it's starting to okay I'm getting the press open And I'm going to pan the camera over here to the press and we're going to try to do this in one take and I'm knocking stuff over but that's all right Okay, 
and that is it it's all locked down you can see the tip of the handle right here well maybe you can't I'll lean you over tip of the handle here is sticking out we're gonna let that set a good 10 or 15 minutes we're gonna come back pull it out see what it looks like if it's acceptable we'll move on if it's not I'm just going to pop those pieces off, throw it back on there, and we're going to try again. All right, so I'll bring you back when we're ready for that. All right, let's take a look, see what we got. Hmm not bad for a first attempt but I don't like this here it's a little too close so we're gonna pop this apart throw these pieces back on there let me plug the griddle back in and we're gonna try one more time to get this right so get in here see if I can pop these pieces apart just like that There we go. And that's why I super glue that. So those don't easily come apart on me. Okay. Throw these back on the griddle. And you're going to see a little bit of magic here. They're going to flatten back out right when they get up to temperature. Get my gloves on because we are going to do this again until I get that exactly the way I want it. I just wasn't happy with the way that looked. So, I can already feel this getting up a little bit warm. And the nice thing about this griddle is it's non-stick and that works out really well when you're doing kydex we're almost there I can feel this warming up right now I'm just giving that piece a little push so it's flattening out and if you had like a hot air gun or a hair dryer you could speed this up I'm gonna turn that over turn that piece over because I want these right this area right here to get warm and start getting elastic and then we'll flip it again and you can see that's where our sharpie marks were it's starting to get there uh -huh -huh -huh. You really do need gloves like this, let me tell you. You don't want like super thick gloves, you want something that you can pick small stuff up with. Oh yeah, almost there. Now see, this is why I like Kydex. Some other materials, if I was doing something like this with, I doubt I would get a second chance. Got our press all ready to go over here. Yeah, almost there. I can hear somebody going, oh my God, you're ruining it. I'm not ruining anything. See that, it's almost flat. One thing you do want to watch out for when I had it upside down, I did get this right here a little bit hotter, so that that spot right there is a little shiny. So we're going to use this as our bottom part. Since I'm right hand dominant, when I put that in here, it's going to be like that, as if I'm wearing the belt knife on my right hip. And this is going to be ready here shortly, almost. Ooh, my gloves heating up. Okay. 
Almost. I notice there's a little bit of dust inside my press. I'm getting that stuff out of here. almost there see that if you end up doing what I'm doing doing it twice it takes a little bit longer to get it back up to temperature because you're flattening out all those ridges and everything and this one's almost perfectly flat this one's got a little bit of a bump right there I'm still working on it still working on it okay that's about perfect I think I'm ready to give it another try so we're gonna pan you over to the press we're gonna try to do this again here we go Try to get that centered, right like that. Bring this piece in, get that centered. Just like that. And bring that guy in. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna let that, I'm gonna unplug the griddle, let it cool off, and we're gonna give that a good 10 to 15 minutes, and I will bring you back. Okay, we're back. 15 minutes has went by. Let's see what we got. Hopefully it's better than the first time. Eh, a little bit better. I think we can make that work except now I'm off here <laughs> oh man I gotta do that again rather than bore or torture the rest of you watching me do this again I'm gonna do it again off camera because you see this big gap I wanted this more over the handle of course now the auto focus is acting up but you see that I wanted this further back so I got to do it again so I'm gonna turn this off do it again get it right and then we'll be back see I'm even showing you my mess ups okay everybody we're back we've had enough elapsed time let's see if third time is the charm small prayer Oh, that looks pretty good. See that? We have plenty here to trim. I think that will do. Yep. I think that'll do. Look at that. Third time was the charm. Now we could have probably got a better press right in here around the handle for sure because we do have a bit of a gap I'm sorely tempted to get a heat gun out and try to make that part better but uh, man I think that'll do yep I think that'll do okay Rather than drive myself crazy trying to do this over and over again, we're going to accept that this is what we got. Not perfect, but hey, neither am I. As long as it holds the knife and does what I want it to do, it'll be good enough. Alright, so let me get all set up here and I'll show you the next step. 
Okay, we are ready for the next step. So the next step, we have our eyelets. And rather than repeat myself over and over and over again, knifekits.com. See, there it is, www.knifekits.com. That's where I got the eyelets. Okay, these eyelets require a quarter inch drill bit, but what you want to use is what is called a brad point. That's what's got this little sharp tip. Okay. If you hear scurrying and stuff in the background, that's the cats fighting over a toy right now. They're being very annoying, but we're going to ignore them. Okay. Now, I made a little cheater tool to make this next part easy on myself. Basically, on the sheath you have a transition you see how this is, is rounded and then it gets flat from that flat point out is where you want to put your eyelets so we would put an eyelet right there and then you would space them out however you want to space them out and then go all around so hold on a second I can't concentrate with the cat hold on all right no longer is the cat underfoot causing a mess so let's get back to what I was saying eyelets you want your eyelets to go on the flat areas and you want it the center of the eyelet to be a quarter inch out from where it becomes flat now my little cheater tool that I made from a piece of scrap kydex if you measure this it'll be exactly a quarter of an inch to the center of that hole okay boom so that's where we would do with the eyelets now we don't want any eyelets because this is our cutoff point so we wouldn't want any eyelets beyond that point so what I'm going to do I'm going to take this now you can take a pencil and you can draw on this kydex and it'll show up see that we don't want anything above that okay so that's my cutoff now everybody spaces their eyelets differently some people do inch some people do inch and a half I've seen some people do three-quarter hey it's up to you what you want to do for your spacing me I'm just gonna try to be simple about this I'm going to put, did I mention it's not easy to do this from the other side of the camera? I'm going to put an eyelet right here. And I'm going to put an eyelet, I think right, right there. Okay. I'll be right back. I got to check something real quick. Because now all of a sudden, since I kicked the cats out, they're being quiet. So I gotta make sure they're not up to mischief. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. And I was right. They were into a little bit of mischief. So, anyway. Plus, I had to check a measurement for where I wanna do these eyelets. And I want to find that center because see I got four laid out now I want to do right in the middle of those which would be there don't worry I'll show you this here in a minute I'm just out of camera doing some measurements okay so I'm gonna have eyelet here eyelet here 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 here, here, and then I got to do two down here. So I'm going to use my little nifty tool, my little cheater tool. Okay. Okay. So there's six. I got to do a couple down here. So what I want to do, I want to make a line. We're going to say right a 
right like that. See that line? And we're going to use that for reference. I'm going to put a an eyelet here. And I'm going to put an eyelet here. Now I'm going to look at that. I'm going to look at that for symmetry. Doesn't look too bad. And then when we do our eyelets, we can come in here and we're going to trim. But the first eyelets we got to do are this one and this one. These are the first we got to do. And of course, one of the tools I need, I don't have in here. So let me pause it and I'll be right back. Okay, we are back. I had to go get a center punch and a block of wood so I can put this sheath on here and I want to punch these as close to the center like that. That just gives me a point for the brad point to go on. And we're going to do one right there. And we're just going to keep doing that all the way around. Oh, that one can be over a little bit. Okay, so we got those. Now we're going to do the other side real quick. Sorry, I'm bumping the camera. But usually I don't have to work around the camera. Usually I'm right over the top of the work I'm doing. Okay. Uh-oh. Sheath has gotten loose. All right, I got to go get some uh, clips I got, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. And what has happened, yep, it came loose. That's fine. I just need to make sure that this is still centered on the blade. I'm going to take these little spring clips, clamps actually, spring clamps, and I'm going to go on here just like this. So it's going to hold it together. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use those brad, the correct size brad point, which is why you should experiment beforehand. But for these, I believe it's quarter. I can check with my cheater tool. Here's quarter. Yep, it's quarter. Now when you drill these, you can use a drill press or a hand drill, it doesn't matter. But when you drill them and you pull out, a lot of times you'll get a little piece of kydex like this stuck on here, and you can just flick that off. I'm gonna drill these two. I'm gonna bring it back because we're gonna to have to put our uh, eyelets in there, and I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. So I'll be right back. All right, we're back. We got the holes drilled, and I got a little bit of a some gunk and a burr in there. That's fine. I'm just gonna take and pop this apart. You see that? A little bit of gunk in there. I'm gonna take a pocket knife. I'm just gonna knock that out, just like that. There's a little bit in that one, not a big deal. So you just want to remove any uh, any burrs, foreign material. Okay, that looks good. That looks good. Okay, now we're gonna get set up to uh, do our eyelets. Look at that, it goes right back together the way it should. Yeah, a little bit of gunk in there. Okay. Oh, some right there, too. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and clamp that back together. That's exactly where it should be. And I'm going to get set up and show you how I'm going to do the eyelets. So I'll be right back. All right. We are back. 
This is an Arbor Press that I bought at Harbor Freight. I have modified it for setting uh, snaps for clothing and other projects and it will take a set of dies to set these eyelets. Here's the set of dies. Let me get them out of this bag so I can get a better look at them. Okay, I bought these dies at knifekits.com. Okay, just like that. Now, how you modify, I'm not saying you should go out and do this. They do sell a tool that's kind of C-shaped that you can buy pretty cheap that'll set these eyelets, but like a lot of things cheap, it doesn't do that good of a job. So, I uh, modified and drilled this and everything so these two holes line up. And I put the bottom die in on this top die. I get everything lined up and I lock it in. And I just make sure that this is, yep, that's lined up. I'm ready to set uh, eyelets. So you take your eyelets and you want to make sure you do all your eyelets from the same side. Okay, I'm only doing the first two, the bottom two. So we can go ahead and then we'll go to the next step. I'll show you what that is. Oh, and you see how most of the lines I've drawn are rubbed off? I'm going to go ahead and take my thumb. I'm just going to work the rest of that graphite off before we do this. Not that it matters, but hey, okay. all that graphite's gone now. Okay, so I'm going to do all my eyelets. I'm going to treat this as the top side because I'm right hand dominant. So we're only doing these bottom two. So there they are in there. There's the, this is A side, this is B side. A side, B side. Okay. So let's see if I can properly do this with the uh, camera here. Okay. And let's see how this looks. All the way down. It's hard to tell. Ah, there we go. I felt it go that time. Okay. So there's the A side, there's the B side. Oh, that don't look good. I might have to drill that one out. See, I'm trying to do this from around the camera and I realize I can't do that. So I'm gonna pause this and go ahead and set the other one like I should. Okay, everyone, I got that rivet drilled out or eyelet drilled out and I got a new one in here and I realized what an absolute idiot I am. I was trying to set that one backwards. See, that's what one looks like when it's set properly. That's what kind of an idiot I am. Apparently when I turn the camera on, not only do I remember how to say certain things or talk, but uh, I forget things. And I haven't done this in a while, so there is that. Okay, so here's the eyelet. You want the eyelet, this piece standing through, and it goes in the die like that. So the male part of the die comes down and goes inside the dial, the uh, eyelet. And then you just push. And then when you pull this out, we have a perfectly set, very professional looking set of eyelets. Okay, I'm gonna take these clamps off we're gonna finagle the knife out and we want to remove this bamboo skewer and since I glued it on sometimes it's a bit fun getting them off and I'm using this uh, knife but you can see why I glue them on because I have fun sometimes doing this 
that and I'm way out of practice. I haven't made a sheath like this in at least three years, so if you all bear with me. Okay, so I got the bamboo skewer off. There's going to be our knife sheath. <coughs> now I need to sketch out how I wanted to cut this. Now where these eyelets are, where the edge of this eyelet is, or the hole, I'm going to go up about an eighth of an inch. So, what I'm going to sketch out, let me readjust this so you can see what I'm doing, or what I'm talking about. So, an eighth of an inch beyond this. So, because I want to get right near that. Come up here. Come up here. Okay. So, that's going to be our basic our basic shape once again I'm not an expert sheath builder for kydex I'm an amateur but I have made sheaths that work okay now this up here is the most important part because that's where 90% of our retention is going to be. So I basically want this to come up and over and I want I want this to be something like that. So that's our basic shape that we're going for. And I can take more off the end here. I can bring this around. I can round this more. In fact, I'm going to have to take off more because you see this gap we got here. Now, the next part, if you don't have access to power tools, is going to be really difficult. Well, I'm not difficult, but a kind of a pain. I use a bandsaw, and I'm going to cut the majority of this material off. Um, first, I'm going to set the rest of these eyelets, though. So let me get the knife out set it to the side. I'm going to set the rest of these eyelets and this is the A side, this is my top. So my eyelets are going to be inserted through here. Okay, so there they all are all inserted. Now I'm just going to set all of them. It's one. It's two. That's three. So we got all our eyelets set. That's our A side, looks pretty nice. They all look pretty even. This one's a little tight right here, but hey, it's home built. Now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna take my bandsaw and I'm gonna trim, 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 trim. Then I'm gonna take it to, I have a uh, drum sander that I use for woodworking and I'm gonna start sanding. Now. Like I said, you don't have access to power tools. You can use uh, like a hand jeweler saw and you could cut all this, okay? Then let's say you don't have access to power tools, but let's say you have a drill. You can get, um, God, I can't remember what the hell they're called, 
but it's a attachment that goes in the drill that allows you to put a sanding disc like a six inch sanding disc they're adhesive on the end of a drill so it's a sanding disc you could use that to start your profiling okay but I'm gonna go do that I'm not taking you in the workshop it's gonna be way loud and I don't want to assault your eardrums so I'll be back when I have that done okay everybody we're back and after the shape cutting and shaping this is what we got okay now watch this so she goes in locks right in not coming out here I made a purchase point for my thumb now that's a little tight I'll admit you can see I got some kydex debris on the sheath because there's some kydex and other foreign material in there that's why we leave the tape on the knife because if there's any silica carbide from the uh, sanding drum in there it'll scratch your knife when you're going in and out like that plus I got to do some hand sanding I got to add a little inner bevel to this right here so she'll slide and lock in easier so I got to do some sanding some final finishing and when that's done I'll take an air compressor and through the drain hole here I'll blow all that material out the end of the sheath okay but that's going to finish part two of Kydex uh, I don't want to make this any longer otherwise it's going to be a ridiculously huge video so part three I hope you come back for it is where we get this 100% finished we're going to add belt loops uh, belt loop so you can wear it or maybe you want to do a molly attachment system or maybe you want to do something else like a scout carry I'm going to show you how you can do all that also there's other accoutrements that will be done in part three so I hope you come back for part three and uh, I'll see y'all later out in the woods.